I feel lucky to have grown up in the golden age of arcades. I remember waiting in line to play things like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong when they first came out. I've always wanted to own a classic arcade machine, but I never really had the funds or the space to do so. When I first came across a couple of websites with plans to make a desktop arcade unit, I knew that I had to build one myself. Thanks to the Raspberry Pi and the RetroPie distribution, I was able to put my plan in motion. For those who aren't familiar with the Raspberry Pi, it's basically a computer that's not much bigger than a deck of playing cards. RetroPie is an operating system distribution for it that lets you play thousands of games ranging from classic video game consoles to those arcade titles of old. In this video, I'm going to give you a glimpse at how I designed and built this project. So let's start off with the major electronic components that went into it. First off, we have the 5 volts DC power supply. The one I ended up with is rated for 5 amps. Next is a 4 port USB hub to power some of the external circuits as well as to connect devices to the Raspberry Pi. Thirdly, there is the Raspberry Pi itself which is a Model 3B. Then there is a Teensy 2.0 microcontroller that lets the 8 buttons and joystick talk to the Pi. Next is a 3.7 watt stereo amp connected to two speakers. Finally, there is a 7 inch TFT display with a DPI Kippa to connect it to the Raspberry Pi itself. One very important tool that I use once I get all of these components in my possession is a digital caliper. When building a project like this, you need to get precise measurements of things such as buttons and external USB ports so that you know how and where to place them in the design process. Speaking of the design process, all of this began with Onshape.com's online CAD software. After looking at the dimensions from some other cabinets that I've seen around the internet, I put together the plans for the outer shell of the cabinet. Once I had the basic shape, I took the exported files into EasyDraw so that I could add various details such as holes, speaker grills, and the location of the screen. Here we have the top, bottom, and front side of the cabinet. There's really nothing special to see about these parts, but they're obviously necessary. Next we have the sides where I put the location of the speakers as well as a couple of the side buttons. Here we have the etched marquee as well as a piece that goes below it. These pieces make up a good portion of the cabinet's shell, which was made entirely of 8th inch plywood. Let's take a look at the back portion of the cabinet, shall we? Here we have the power connector, which has a switch as well as a fuse holder. Next to it is a couple of USB ports so that I can connect external devices to the machine, such as game pads or a keyboard. And that's all about there is to see from the rear. On the bottom of the machine are four rubber feet that are screwed to the cabinet. Those same screws also mount a piece of plexiglass that contain all of the electronics inside. Let's go ahead and remove the six screws that hold on the back panel and see what's inside. On the other side is that 5 volts DC power supply mounted with a couple of screws. Next to that are those USB ports. You'll notice a couple of small pieces of plexiglass. These were necessary to get the ports to sit flush with the back of the cabinet. And here's the wiring coming from the power connector which then goes to the power supply. Here we have the 4 port USB hub. The power supply connects directly to this as well as the Raspberry Pi itself. Connected to the hub are those two rear ports from the outside of the cabinet the Teensy 2.0 which is used for the controls and the audio amplifier is also connected here but only for power. Finally the hub is connected to one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. The hub itself is nothing special. It's just a cheap unit that I picked up off of Amazon for about $10. Here's this little Max 98306 amplifier that powers the speakers for the system. You can find this from Adafruit for about $9. It's super easy to use and was perfect for this project. Here we have the Raspberry Pi 3B with the Kippa board connected on top of it. This lets the Pi connect directly to the TFT display without using HDMI. It's also how the display gets its power. 
The only downside of using this is that it takes up most of the GPIO pins, but I thought it was the easiest way to get a display running and Adafruit had a great tutorial on how to do it. This particular display is 7 inches and I also picked it up from Adafruit for about $40 which is quite the bargain. Now here was one of my first big design challenges. You see there are no built in mounting supports for the display. All you get is a plain metal bezel. After taking some careful measurements, I designed a bracket system using three layers of plexiglass. There's a back plate that goes behind the screen. Next is another plate that wraps around the display except for an opening at the bottom for the ribbon cable. Finally, we have a third plate that makes the whole bracket system level with the front of the display. I then used five mounting screws to mount the entire thing to the opening of the cabinet. You may notice that the bezel of the display is slightly wider on one side, so I needed to make sure and shift everything over a bit so that things were centered. I wanted to design things so that the bezel was mostly hidden behind the wood of the cabinet, and I think I was able to accomplish that quite nicely. The display was not the only thing that I had to design a mounting system for. The speakers I chose were pulled from an old set of computer speakers, and they also didn't have any sort of mounting brackets. So I designed something very similar to how I mounted the display using a sandwich of three pieces of plexiglass. Instead of using separate speaker grills, I designed ports into the side of the cabinet itself. Since the whole project was sliced up using the laser cutter, I was able to get a nice clean look. Next, we'll take a look at what's behind the control panel on the front of the machine. Four screws hold everything in and then everything just kind of slides out. Here's the basic design of the control panel. I ended up cutting a similar one out of plexiglass to go on top to make things a bit more comfortable for the player. Here are six arcade style buttons as well as a nice clicky joystick. All of these were purchased from Adafruit as well. Each button cost a little less than $3 and the joystick cost about $15. All of these are wired up to the Teensy 2.0 which runs nothing more than a demo controller sketch. Under all of these wires is a prototype board with the Teensy. I used a bunch of terminal blocks so that I could easily replace a button if I needed to. And that's about all there is to see on the inside of the machine. It's a very simple design, but I think it gets the job done. Well, that's all I have to show for this particular build. If you're looking to do something like this yourself, it's not exactly a cheap project. Between materials and electronics, everything cost around $200. While a laser cutter isn't absolutely necessary to build something like this, I'm not sure that I could have gotten by without its ability to cut such clean holes. Now it's time to sit back and play some games. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I really love building these sort of things and I'm glad that I was able to share it with you. If you would like to support the work that I do, please visit my Patreon link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Awesome.